Hi guys, look at what Seven Artisans sent over for review. These are two APS-C budget cine lenses from their vision line. This one here is the 25 millimeter T1.05 and this one is the newly released 12 millimeter. Just look at how beautiful these lenses are. Oh, 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 okay, we gotta test them out. Don't let the beauty fool you. My wife, she was fooled by beauty once and that worked out very poorly for her. So uh, let's go test the footage. Shaking on Oh, what's your soul saying? Oh, is your world changing? Oh, what's your soul saying? Oh, is your world changing? Your face tells me First of all, did you see that cinematic masterpiece, the lonely photographer wanting to get out of the hustle and bustle of the big city, go somewhere more peaceful, and then at the end, the young person looking at the big city, wanting to get in? My God, Spielberg, if, you, if you're watching this, uh, give me a call. So obviously I shot all of that likely Oscar winning footage with these two lenses. I just swapped out for whichever focal length I needed, whether it was the 12 or the 25, because the color rendition was exactly the same. That's one of the great things. If you buy the cine lenses that normally cine lenses have neutral profile anyway, but the vision ones are going to match up identically to other vision lenses. So you don't have to do any matching at all. And with cine lenses, I should mention a little bit about that. So you got your T-stops first of all, because cinematographers will want to know exactly how much light is reaching the sensor. And uh, that is what the T-stop will give you. It tells you the light when it passes through the lens, all the glass and all the elements, then uh, what is the light that hits the sensor. So that is how it's measured. Whereas with the regular photography lenses, the f-stop is just the amount of light that goes through the iris, so it is not as exact. Also with the cine lenses here, they're very well built, all metal here, these ones, and uh, you have these teeth here for the aperture and the focus, so that if you want to set up a rig, put it on rails, and get yourself a follow focus, something like that, then you don't have to buy anything extra. You can just uh, stick the follow focus right on there and control your focus. And speaking of the focus, because these are all manual lenses, by the way, no electronic connectors whatsoever. It's a fully manual lens. And with the fully manual lens comes proper focusing. So hear this. So it has a hard stop, whereas something like the Sigma 16 mil F 1.4, you can just spin the uh, focus ring for infinity. So you can't repeat your focus pulls on this guy. You can repeat the focus pulls on this and they can be very accurate. And with these vision lenses too, you see the teeth, they all line up right there. So when you have the cameras on rigs and rails and you wanna swap out the lenses, then it doesn't take much to adjust where your follow focus is. So you don't have to fool around too much with that. And another convenience is they all have 82 millimeter filter thread. So you can just have the one filter and stick it on all of the vision lenses, which is a really great idea. Now the 12 millimeter lens weighs 602 grams and the 25 millimeter lens weighs 956 grams. And that is not a bad thing when it comes to cine lenses because they should be heavier generally than photography lenses because you want that extra stability. There's no stabilization in the lenses obviously and cinematographers don't want that. They also don't want stabilization in their camera bodies generally because they don't want to censor 
that can move around. They want to control their stability. If they want it super smooth, they'll put it on a gimbal or a crane. But they, uh, if they want handheld footage, they want it to look like handheld footage. But it can't be too jerky and jittery, so you need a bit of weight to it. And that is what these lenses do. Plus, they are balanced very well where the weight goes back towards the camera body. So it's easier to get those smooth shots. And generally with cine lenses too, there's no focus breathing. There is focus breathing on these lenses. I will get to that in the drawbacks. So before I talk about the compromises of these lenses, let's talk about the price, which makes the compromises make a whole lot more sense. The uh, 25 millimeters is $549 USD for a T1.05, and the 12 millimeters is $319 USD. And so this is much cheaper than most cine lenses. So you're going to have some drawbacks. And uh, one of the drawbacks is the focus breathing. There is noticeable focus breathing on both of the lenses, but it's only when you do really long focus throws. You know what? If you're just focusing normally, like you would be doing practically, like when I was out in the street and I was focusing on the people who definitely did not want me focusing on them. I had no issue with focus breathing whatsoever. It's only when you go from really close to really far away and you do that fast that you will notice that focus breathing. There's definitely chromatic aberration and loca, the longitudinal chromatic aberration. You are going to see that in these lenses, but again, budget cine lenses. There is some flaring, but I don't consider that a drawback. I like to see some flaring in my lenses. It looks more natural to me. And you're only going to get it when you point it at a very strong light source like the sun. And it doesn't ruin your image. It just appears in your image, which I think is fine. The corners are a bit soft. So if you're looking for a very clinical lens that is sharp from A to Z, you are not going to get that. But in all honesty, that is not what I am looking for when I'm out shooting like the independent artsy crap that I try to shoot. I just want it to get a nice image that looks, you know, for lack of a better term, cinematic. And these lenses give me a really nice image that uh, looks more like I would expect out of my FX30 rather than when I say I take the 24 millimeter G Master. That's a fantastic lens, but it doesn't give me that same type of character. It doesn't feel as much like a movie as these guys do. And that's one of the reasons I like them. So it has a 270 degree focus throw, so you can really get that precise focus very easily. When I was using it, I had a lot of fun focusing with this, and I generally don't like manually focusing that much because I feel like I'm not that great at it, but this thing made it very easy. So the minimum focus distance is 14 centimeters here on the 12 millimeter. And since that's, that's such a wide angle lens, 18 millimeters full frame equivalent, you can get really unique angles with a wide perspective. You know, you give yourself one of those big noses, like I do like a Charlie Kaufman movie with those strange angles, you know, something like that. And the 25 millimeters, uh, it's a 23 centimeters is the closest that you can focus. So are these lenses perfect? No, I think we've established that they definitely are not, but you can't expect them to be at this price point. And for people who want a cinema lens, you can get them now at quite reasonable prices. And now you can just get in there, use your follow focus properly, rig it up, have your T-stops, be a professional on set with lenses that do work very well, but just have some compromises. So thanks to Seven Artisans very much for sending these out. This was some of the most fun I have had in months on this channel, testing out these cinema lenses. So anyway, leave down in the comments below if you use cinema lenses and which ones are your favorite. If you do use them, thanks for watching this. We'll talk to you again soon, okay? Bye-bye. I hope that photographer finds love.